Hi friends, welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. Today I have a fun fruit filled video for you. I hope you enjoy it. But first of all, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Brenda. This is my sweet Oliver who just got a grooming and a bath and a brand new tie they gave him. I thought it was adorable. And if you're returning, welcome back. So with all that being said, let's get to crafting. Okay, here's DIY number one. So for this DIY, I'm going to use two of these signs from Dollar Tree and my Iron Orchids uh, Lemon Rub-On Transfers. I bought this, I believe, last year. Now, these rub-on transfers are beautiful, and it looked like one long vine, but it was a little too wide to go on my sign, so I kind of cut it down. And it's like any rub-on transfer, you just lay your rub-on transfers on your surface and then you're just going to rub and rub and rub and uh, rub until your arms feel like they're going to fall off. <laughs> and, and honestly, it, it didn't take a lot and it's it, it was just that there was so much uh, rub-ons here for me to rub so yeah my arm was getting tired but <laughs> um, I'm just gonna pull up that uh, top piece there and keep rubbing whenever I saw anything pulling up with it um, just you know if you see some coming up you just lay your piece back down rub a little bit more and then continue to pull up but they are really easy I I love our bond transfers but anyways because they are easy but yet they make everything look so high-end so here I just added another lemon to it. I think I did add a few more leaves, but I didn't show that. Then once I had both of my signs done, I took some of these reed sticks, bamboo sticks. I get them from Amazon. I bought them a couple of years ago. When I first started my channel, I still have some. I'm running low. I'm going to have to get some more soon. But anyways, um, I am going to make frames with them. So I'm just using my miter shears here. Uh, to cut them down and I'm just using I'm just kind of laying them out and um, laying them in place so that I know exactly where uh, I need to trim them and then I just mark them with my pencil you'll see me do that right here and then after I have this cut then I will just cut another one on the same side or same size um, I actually I think did four because I'm doing two signs so I just marked it like you see there and then used it to um, create all the ones that I needed. Once I was done with that, I took my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm brushing it on. I will do this to all of my pieces there. And then once I had it all brushed on, I'm going to take a paper towel and just wipe off the excess. And that's all there is for these things. And I did not do one side because the side I'm going to glue, I didn't worry about that side. So then I took my tight bond quick and thick multi-purpose glue <laughs> and I am putting it along the back of the strips that I cut out and I'm going to use um, my hot glue and that multi-purpose glue and attach them just like you see me doing right there. Now the next one here, I, um, I went all the way across with my tight bond glue and then uh, added the hot glue on the ends, but um, I decided after I got that on there that it wasn't enough to hold the middle down. So I added some clips. So on this one, I just added some wood or my multi-purpose glue and made more spots for my hot glue there. That way it would um, hold the middle part down while the other glue was setting. And there they are. Look at how beautiful the, they are. I didn't do any bows or anything. I just loved them the way they looked. I think they look high end. Looks like something you could get from Hobby Lobby. You let me know what you think, but I love them. Okay, so today is the first of the month and it's my first of the month collaboration that I do with every month with my friend Amanda with Six Kids and a Glue Gun. This month's theme is Summer Fruits, so make sure you check out her channel and subscribe to her if you haven't already and check out the playlist to get all kinds of inspiration of Summer Fruits. Okay, here's DIY number two. So for this DIY, I'm using one of those Dollar Tree crates and I'm going to paint it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color white. I also took one of these chalkboard signs from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use these uh, 
transfers or stencils, whatever you want to call them. These come from Chalk Couture. One, those come from the Farmhouse Cherries uh, set. And I love that set. It's so cute. And then I'm going to use this one. And this one comes from this set, which is called, uh, I think, what is it? With a cherry on top. <laughs> I knew it was something like that. I'm also going to use my chalk paste in the color bright white and cherry. I thought that was fitting. Um, bark and uh, pesto. So if you're not familiar with Chalk Couture, they are a self-adhesive stencil with a silk screen in the middle. And we fuzz it the first time we use them. Um, although this is not a painted surface, but... <laughs> It's always a good time, good idea to fuzz it the first time you use them. Then I'm going to lay them down on my board and I'm going to go over them with my chalk paste and you'll see I'll be using some little detail um, squeegees so that I can get into the smaller areas. But I just kind of went around and then I would pull up every once in a while because we don't want that chalk paste to dry on to the uh, silk screen because if that happens then it will pull up when you pull it up and then you'll, your image will not be very good. Um, if you are interested in Chalk Couture or if you think it looks fun because I love it, <laughs> um, I am a designer and I do have links in my description box below that you can check out. It goes to my Chalk Couture page. If you um, are interested in trying it, you can always, you know, just buy a stencil and some paste and see what you think but you could also join the couture club um and that what that is it's a monthly subscription it's $21.99 a month it gives you an exclusive 8 by 11 um silk screen transfer that you cannot buy you can only get it if you are part of the club and it also comes with three coordinating chalk paste and um sometimes they send a little uh surface to go with it. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out on my site or you can email me if you have any questions. I always think it's a great way to get started. You do, if you do enroll in that, you do have to stay enrolled for three months before you can cancel it. But I always think it's a great way to get started to try it out um, and see if it's something that you really like. So as you can see, I finished the other sign and I put this transfer onto the front of my painted um, little crate here and I am just going to remove that and go wash it all off but look how cute that is. Then I took my wood glue here and I'm going to put it along the uh, little holes there that um, because this was a hanging sign and I'm going to put hot glue on the ends and then I'm going to glue it to the back of my little crate here just like you see and then after that I decided to dress it up a little bit um so I'm going to take this pool noodle and I'm going to kind of cut it down. I cut down another piece. I'm going to stuff them inside my crate and then I'm going to fill them up with these cherries. I got these. They were 40% off um, the $6.99. I got these a couple years ago, I think, from Hobby Lobby. Maybe it was last year. And I'm just going to put them inside my crate and just kind of straightening them all out until I can get them inside my crate. And then I'm going to take some ribbon and I'm going to glue it along the sides of my crate and then it right up to the image there in the front. And then after I had those hot glued, I took some twine and I made some teeny little just regular shoestring bows and I put them on each side there. Then I went ahead and took some more of this ribbon and I'm just going to outline the top sign with it. I love the gingham with the cherries. I just think it looks so countryish, and, and I love that. And so I'm just going to glue one on each side of my sign, and then I'm going to glue uh, one on the bottom and the top, just kind of framing that whole little picture there. And then, as you can see, I dumped out my cherries because it was kind of hard trying to keep them in there while I was doing this. And then I just made a few more bows and put them on the corners. And that's all there was for this. I love this. I think it is so cute. Ah, and I got this last year. I'm not sure if this um, stencil I didn't look is still available. Um, it might be. I got it last year. But anyways, you have to let me know what you think about this one. 
Okay, guys, I hope you're enjoying today's video. I wanted to stop in real quick and, again, thank all my subscribers. You guys, I you mean the world to me. I really do appreciate you. And I am getting really close to my 20,000 subscriber um, milestone and I will have a giveaway once I hit that in fact I might have to but I just want to encourage you if you enjoyed today's video and you um, have subscribed to me and you know people that might like DIYing or home decor on a budget all that kind of stuff share this video with them help me reach that 20,000 before my birthday which is May 7th coming up and I would love to reach it by then so if you are watching and you have not subscribed yet make sure you hit that subscribe button if you've been watching and haven't subscribed button what are you waiting for hit that subscribe button you can do it from your TV your phone your tablet laptop let me know in the comments below if you don't know how to do it I'll let you know so make sure you help help this girl out I truly would appreciate it Oliver would appreciate it too <laughs> And with all that being said, let's continue on with the video. Okay, here's DIY number three. So for this DIY, I took one of these square wreath forms from Dollar Tree. And this ribbon I got, um, I think I bought it last year at Sam's Club. And I am going to start off by gluing it together around the corner of my wreath form here. And it was kind of hard getting it to stay there and then once I had it glued there I'm just going to start wrapping and I just kind of pull really tightly and I just start wrapping my wreath form and um, I as you can see I'm just kind of taking my spool I did try and make um, tighten up my uh, ribbon a little bit easier or a little bit more so that it was easier to wrap and keep on the spool. And then once I got all the way around to the end, you'll see me do that here. I will um, cut it off and I will hot glue it to the back. And this was super easy. I'm not a huge wreath fan, but I just wanted to do this. And um, I really like the way this came out, but it, this is super easy. So if you aren't used to making um, wreaths this is a real easy way to do it so I took one of these lemon picks I got this I believe last year as well from Dollar Tree and I took some wire for uh, not wire foam um, <laughs> what is that floral wire and I'm just poking it through the ribbon and then I twist and twist and twist and I just um, cut off the excess there and just kind of move that so it's not sticking out and I just kept laying my lemon pieces down and then I just kept using my floral wire to um, attach them to my wreath then I took these berries I got these I believe last year as well and I am going to do the same thing I'm going to cut them apart as well and then I'm going to just add them along with the um, lemons now I love blue with lemons I just I know a lot of times you see the black check um buffalo check with uh lemons but I love the blue with it so that's why I added the blueberries I just love it plus I had this ribbon that had the lemons and blueberries so I took these pieces of ribbon here I cut them down I think it was 10 inches I think I had like six of them I don't remember how many but after I dovetailed the ends I'm going to make a bow a different way so I'm going to fold it and down to about two-thirds of the rib of the the bow and then I'm just going to um, scrunch them up in the middle and then I'm just going to continue to alternate the two ribbons like you see now I don't remember I think I might have got that lemon ribbon maybe from Hobby Lobby but I don't remember I've had it for a couple of years once I had them all together I'm going to take a zip tie and I'm going to use that zip tie to tighten all those ribbons making sure all the little part of the ribbons is connected in there I want to make sure it's all secure and then I'm just going to start fluffing the bows I'm just going to kind of pull each of those um, loops out and just kind of alternate the which way they go one to the left one to the right until I had it as the way I liked it I also took the ends and kind of poofed them outward and then I took some more floral wire and went around the middle of my bow and then I'm just going to attach that to the corner there just like I attached my fruit going through the poking it through the um the ribbon and twisting it in the back and that's all there was super easy but I love it I 
love it. You have to let me know what you think about this in the comment box below. And let me know. I know I think it, it seems like lemons are kind of going out, but if you'd like to see more lemon DIYs, let me know. I'd I'd love to um do some more if you'd like to see it. Okay, so it is a celebration of your recreations. I cannot think or talk tonight. Okay, so pretty Talitha. Oh, I love those. Those are beautiful. She made those with tumbling tower blocks. And Don, these are beautiful. I love them. Thank you so much. And then we have Barbara. She made this as well. All of them are just beautiful ladies. Thank you so much. And if you have a creation or recreation that you would like me to showcase for you, you can send pictures to my email address that's listed there, or you can send them to me through Instagram or Facebook Messenger. I'm always excited to see those. Okay, DIY number four. Oh, so for this DIY, I'm going to use one of these decorative cake trays from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to start off by I removed the paper there and I'm just going to uh, spray it there with alcohol and wipe it all down. And then I'm going to paint the back side of it with my white chalk paint, not the front, just the back because I wanted the little um, grooves on the front to show through. So then I took that paper that I took off of it and I'm going to add some double-sided tape to the back and add it to the back of my fabric and then I'm going to use that as a template to so that I know how much to cut uh, so that it will fit in the middle of my uh, cake tray and believe it or not I have this sped up that's how slow I'm really going I mean I, I'm I was going really slow because I didn't want to cut the paper and uh, yeah, this, so in this fabric, I also, I bought last year from Walmart. And so I took my Mod Podge and I'm going to put a thick layer of Mod Podge on the middle of my cake pan here. And the reason why I do a thick layer is because I'm using fabric. Um, they do have fabric Mod Podge. I did have it at one point, but I ran out and I have not gotten any. So um, you could also use that as well. And then I'm just gonna lay my piece of fabric down right along the middle here. And then I'm gonna go over it again with some more uh, Mod Podge just for that protective layer. I don't know, might not need it on fabric, but I just like to do it. And so I do set that aside to dry. And while that was drying, I took this wood round. I think this was seven inches. I can't remember. I think I got this from Walmart. I painted it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And then I'm going to use my Cricut. I created this saying. I saw this on the internet. I was looking up sayings for cherries and it says, be the cherry on top of your day. In other words, have a great day, I guess. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how to layer here. So I, I'm making some cherries. They had a couple different colors in them. So it started out with the black. I added the red cherries to it. I added the green leaf. And um, I guess I cut some out that I didn't know I cut out. And then these little white dots there. And then once you have all the layers added, you just add your um, transfer tape on top of it and then you can add the whole piece right on just like that and as you can see i added some cherries to the bottom and cherries to the top then i went ahead with my crimson color from uh, waverly waverly chalk paint in the color crimson and went around that little edge that's around that uh, circle and then i took some of this trim this red shiny trim i've had it in my stash forever I have no idea where I got it, probably Walmart. And I just glued it around the edge of the fabric and then I took my fix all glue and hot glue and I'm gonna glue this sign to the middle. But make sure when you glue it, you glue it right in the middle because here, I mean, I'm sitting down, I should have stood up, but it looks like it's in the middle. It looks like it's centered, but when you see it standing up, it is not centered and <laughs> it drives me nuts. Anyway, so I took some of this ribbon um, and I'm going to make a just a little bow doing the awareness ribbon, scrunching it up with some um, twine and dovetailing the ends. And there it is. I think it is so cute. I love that tray. It makes it look like lace. I love it. You have to let me know what you think about it, even with it being crooked. <laughs> okay, DIY number five. Okay, so this is a two-sided DIY. So I took one of these um, little mason jars from Dollar Tree and I'm going to use my heat gun to remove those flowers. 
And uh, yeah, I had to really work it, but I finally got them all removed. And once it was all removed, I took my little sanding sponge from Dollar Tree and just kind of sanded it all. Um, and then I am going to clean it and paint it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And then I paint the top part of it with the night sky by Waverly. And once that was all dry, I took some... Um, <laughs> sorry, I was supposed to cut that out. <laughs> sorry guys I took some Mod Podge and I went over the um, tire both sides of the jar and let it dry and while it was drying I took my paintbrush with water and I am going around um, my image now when you do it this way you want to make be careful because that water kind of spreads so you want to make sure your your brush is not right up to your image otherwise it will spread on your image and then when you tear that your image will come off. So <laughs> ask me how I know. Anyways, I'm going to gently rip off where the water was, um, where the, the napkin is wet. And I'm just gonna kind of pull it off gently, very gently, and then I will have my image the way I like it. I did that on both napkins. And then when I was done, I laid my napkins on the front, used my parchment paper, and my heat press to activate it and then I'm shaking my uh, parchment paper off so it doesn't stick to the Mod Podge that was on there. I sanded off um, the excess napkin and then I covered it again with another protective layer of Mod Podge. Once it was dry I realized that napkin was a little off-white. I should have used my plaster color paint instead of white. So I'm just taking a napkin and dipping it in um, the antique wax and going over the edge of my uh, napkin there to kind of make it look a little more rustic and then I'm just using my baby wipe if it's too dark to kind of wipe it off and then I went ahead and decided you know what okay I like that but it still looks too white so I went ahead and just started going around the rest of the jar the mason jar with my antique wax it's just so it kind of blends in with the napkin a little bit better then I took some of this twine I bought this last year they usually have it around um, the summertime when they get their nautical stuff out and I am um, gonna glue it around glue it and then wrap it around my jar about four times and then just glue it again and then I'm gonna make two four loop finger bows and I'm just going to wrap my fingers like you see four times and then after that I'm going to cut a long tail and then I'm going to take that tail I'm going to come around and go around those strands that are between my hand fingers and then come up around and go through that loop that I just made and then pull tightly and then after I have that all done, I am going to glue one on each side of my sign, trim down those long tails, and there it is. Perfect for a little tear tray. I love it. I got this napkin at decoupagenapkin.com. You guys, they have amazing napkins. I always love looking and seeing what they have. But you'll have to let me know what you think about this. Isn't that cute? And uh, which one was your favorite today? I'd love to find out. And if you're interested in any more fruit kind of vet, uh, videos, comment below let me know um, what you would be interested in seeing I have more ideas but I kind of ran out of time so here is your final reveal uh, thank you guys again so much for watching and make sure you check out Amanda's channel and the playlist and get all kinds of ideas and then make sure you share this video and if you haven't yet make sure you hit that red subscribe button before you go I truly appreciate it with all that being said you guys I hope you have a blessed first part of your week and I will be back on the fifth for the five under five challenge. So until then, have a blessed week and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.